I think these are terrapins, darling. Terrapins? Yeah. Okay, let's go that way. Follow Johnny. Oh, what's in here? Stop. Oh, what's that? Two to the sunshine lunch is and I see he's sixteen years old. They look so He's sixteen? Yeah. Wow. So I can hear a kookaburra. Oh, he's cute. Donnie? 
What is it, Donny? It's a snowy owl. Is that your favourite owl? <laughs> if I have one. <laughs> one sat like this. Hi. I want a pet owl, Bob. <laughs> I want a pet snowy owl and call it. And if I have two, polo. Let's listen okay. to you, Donny. And what is that? They're skunks. They're skunks. They're those, those are skunks. Do you know what they do? Fart like me because I'm a skunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's a great, great Wow, God, he's huge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> great man. <laughs> oh, my. Where'd he go? Oh, my goodness, what was here? Oh, my God, Bobby. <laughs> Oh look, look, Bobby, go on. So these um, are like cats are called Betty and Candy. They're Savannah cats, so like, kind of like cheetahs ish. Um, they're Sophia and Paris, and they're European wild cats. <laughs> Oh, look behind you, Johnny. Oh, no. Eagle owl. Right, go right around. Oh, she's going to do the head thing. I love it when owls do the head thing. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Oh, look at the guy. Look at the guy. I love it when owls do Bob get muted. I love it when owls do that. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna do it. <laughs> oh, oh, it winked at me. Oh, hi. I love when they do that head thing. Wee. Oh, man.
little buddies. I said, no, I'm shy. There's a dead one inside the bag. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just I'm touching them again. I'm just kidding. No, Donnie, seriously, I'm just kidding. You can touch them, it's fine. <laughs> Fun at Gentle Shop? Yeah, and I got this cute little bird too, and it's a snowy owl, and I got one. I got, I got Do you one. remember what the snowy owl here was called? Polo. Do you think you should call that one Polo then? I'm going to call mine um, Snowflake Polo. I like that. I always want to learn a snowy owl called Snowflake. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, God, it's 
<laughs> Hold on to your owl, Stone. <laughs> I put it in my pocket. <laughs> of course, it's just that. <laughs> Why does it feel like a normal train ride? I don't know. Just so soothing. <laughs> Alexa, turn on the light. It doesn't work. Oh! <laughs> hey everybody so we're now back home and there's just a couple of things that i want to talk about but we've had an absolutely great day the just shore wildlife park was very interesting you had to walk through like a garden center and then it's at the back of it um so it's a separate place but you do have to walk through the garden center to access it um, but it was £14 for the three of us and it was something that I really enjoyed doing. There were so many hours there, hours that we hadn't seen before. They're quite close to you as well. There's also wildcats and a few other animals as well, like snakes, iguanas, normal kind of wildlife park things, or at least Franklin. Um, I will say it was quite sad though, because I'd gone there specifically to see the wolf dogs. And unfortunately, over the last few months, they both passed away. So that was sad to see. Their toys were also in their pen as well, which I think made it so much sadder. Um, yeah. But my favourite part was there's a little train outside that was £2 per person to ride and it went a lot faster than I thought it was, as you would have seen. And it was a lot of fun. Like, I would have loved to have done that again, but don't you need the yeah. toilet. Um, however, there is something a little bit less happy that we want to talk about quickly. So we obviously stayed in an Airbnb and as you would have seen throughout this video, we'd been speaking really highly about it. It was a place that we really enjoyed staying at. We thought the people were absolutely lovely and... Um, we had been having a great experience, so much so that we'd actually been talking about booking it for the next year's event because these events of Little Hearts Matter, they happen the same weekend every year. So my plan was literally to keep booking them because I loved it. It was a comfortable space. The horses were just absolutely amazing on top of that. It was a great location and we thought the people were very nice. However, we were prompted by Airbnb on the app to fulfil a review and we were driving home, so we just decided we'd do it in the car. And um, we marked five stars on everything apart from communication, which we did three out of five stars, which I thought was fair because if you're someone who uses Airbnb very regularly, you'll know that most people normally send you a message after the booking just to confirm it, say they're looking forward to seeing you. And that way you know that it's been accepted. It's been seen by them and not just by Airbnb because obviously Airbnb take your money straight away, but it doesn't always mean that they've actually seen it. 
And then on top of that, they normally message you a couple of days before you're due to leave with the information regarding checking in. Now, on this listing, it does say that it is a self check in. However, we did have people greet us to see us in. Um, that's important to note, though, and you'll understand why in a second. Um, so, yeah, we wrote a lovely public review, wrote a review on there. We wrote in their guest book saying how much of a lovely time we had and how lovely we thought they were. So it's really surprising that this is how it ended up going. Um, so we got a message from them after the review saying thank you for the review. Oh, and I will screenshot these so they'll be here, but I'm going to read them out for those who don't want to read them because messages are kind of long. So they said, thank you for the review. What has caused the low rating for communication as we try very hard to keep guests informed? So I replied, we chose the slightly lower rating on communication as compared to other hosts, the communication was lacking. Normally you receive a message after booking and then again the day before travel with the information regarding check-in and how to find the home. However, this time we had to reach out first because yesterday, sorry, not yesterday, the day before yesterday on Friday, I did have to message them. Sorry, Thursday. We were leaving on Friday. I messaged them Thursday morning um just to see what the checking process was because obviously if there was a key box for the key we'd have to have the code for that to be able to get in and because we hadn't heard anything from them at all when we'd booked this months ago we were really concerned that the booking hadn't actually been accepted and we'd be left with nowhere to go with a disabled child which makes things a lot harder because she does need specific things so they said all right no i don't bother with sending a message when people book why would i i always send a message the day before you can tell it's a well-prepared message so it wasn't nothing you did that prompted it i didn't mark you down on communication as i don't like to hinder people's ability to book but it's very unusual for guests not to say goodbye now i find this very interesting because they are marked as a self-check-in which normally means that you don't speak to the host at all um on top of that it was a 10 a.m checkout we'd been out the night before till i think it was like 9 10 o'clock wasn't it nine yeah. i wouldn't say nine um so obviously dominance is very tired so she was resting which meant that i had to wait for her to rest obviously with her disability and then we had to rush getting everything packed, getting everyone ready, taking off all the bed sheets, wiping down everything and clearing out. Um, we had the car pulled up outside. Their property is adjacent to the property that we stayed in. So they could have seen us pull up if they wanted to come say goodbye. It never crossed our mind to say goodbye as we were meeting more friends today, as you would have seen. We wanted to get out. We had to be at the place um, that we were going to by half ten. So at, we were leaving at quarter to ten. It was a 25 minute drive. We obviously needed to get going. Um, and we didn't want to bother them, you know, we, we had a lovely say, we left mm. messages in the guest book so that they knew that we were thankful and polite and everything, but we didn't feel the need to disturb them with whatever they were doing their morning. We did see their son out and he was clearly working on the animals. So, you know, we didn't want to go and disturb them. We just, you know, cl cleared out and, and left, which is a pretty normal thing with Airbnb. You normally do just, just leave unless you're returning keys by hand. Um... So then she sent another message, but I didn't actually see that until I sent the next one. So that will be missing from this one. Um, so she's followed that on with, oh, and it's not a slightly lower rating. It's a very low rating and could impact our booking. So thanks for that. Um, like I said, we did do three out of five stars, which I don't think is that low. And it was the only one on everything else. We did five stars. It was just that communication star rating. To be fair, like three out of five is like mid. Yeah, I mean, so if like, it was out of six, it would be right in the middle. Yeah, so in some, like, low would be one and two, high would be obviously four and five, so, like, three is, like, there was okay communication, but it wasn't, like, from rest of the, most of the bookings we've done on Airbnb, but you get confirmation from the host saying that, obviously, welcoming you to their stay and everything, and... Yeah, we've always had everything very... like that, like, warm lovely. welcomes, and, but... Obviously, like um, Jade Marie said, with this one, we didn't. We booked it months ago. Yeah. Like, I was really quite concerned on the Thursday that we were going to find out, oh, there's been a mistake, because um, we had no contact from them whatsoever. And for us, that was quite concerning because we were travelling five hours, well, four and a half hours yeah. from home. Um, you know, if we didn't have a place to stay or a place that was suitable for Don Marie's health needs, we'd be really stuck in the middle of nowhere with that or have to give up on something that's really important for her mental health. Like this event has really opened up a lot for her. So that that was a big concern for us, which is why we marked it the way that we did. And especially with like, like with COVID still about, because we have had, or well, I've had bookings like being cancelled before because of the host of having COVID and they couldn't get into clean flat and everything or... Well, not a flat, but where I stayed. But even if all guests had COVID and they obviously couldn't get in there to clean it, so 
with not having communication here is gonna cross your mind yeah and on top of that he did say when he did um meet us he was at the door he said he couldn't set foot in the property because of the covid rules so that that again it would be a reason for us not to yeah. make an effort to say goodbye and, and you know invade that personal space of theirs um also obviously we did speak to him a couple of times like there's obviously a family that owns this property but we spoke to the male in this group um the day that we arrived and then the morning after super friendly uh we actually really like their personality we've been saying to tell them at the event like how lovely the place was to stay and how much we love the people there which is why we're quite upset that this is how it's ended because we had we'd literally been telling people at the whole day at the event how amazing this place was and if we don't book it next year that they had to and it's safe to yeah. say we probably are not going to book this one now which will ex which i'll explain further in in a second so i replied to that i find it very helpful and informative to have the message with checking details and so on ahead of time and it also lets the guests know that booking has been acknowledged this is something every host we've had has done and something we have greatly appreciated well i'm certainly sorry to have missed the opportunity to say goodbye but usually this is not something the hosts want and we had bookings to get off to. We did leave messages in the guest book to thank you. Honestly, we love the state and had already talked about booking ahead for the following year's event, which I think now we will pass on. Have a great weekend. Shame to have such a positive look on you and so bitter. Um, because I just, I wanted to round that conversation off and, and pull it to an end because it was getting very argumentative. And it really was a shame. Like I genuinely am quite upset because I'd literally the whole weekend been singing their praises, telling all the heart families that we spoke to how amazing it was so that they might want to book it if we don't. Um, a lot of the heart families are closer than we are, so they could have booked it for a weekend or something as well outside of the heart meetings. Um, and then the final message that they sent to us was, yes, I agree. Very bitter and very, very petty. We'll probably have plenty of space thanks to your ratings, but glad you won't be looking to book with us again. Not that I believe you had thought about it after marking us down. So please, all your other experiences with hosts has been so great. I'm sure they will continue to be so. So has ours with other guests, though we won't be getting many now. It is a very spiteful thing to have done, especially after you, you can obviously see how hard work, how hard we work to keep the annex like it is. And just because I didn't send you enough messages, you ruin our future. Not a nice thing you've done at all. Which is quite upsetting because... The whole point of the rating system is so that other guests know what, you know, they're going to get out the experience. And for us, the communication was lacking. It did leave us concerned that it wasn't booked. And I don't think it takes too much time to sort out those messages, especially considering that they're probably yeah. copy and pasted messages a lot of the time as well. Just to say that you've got the booking and, you know, it, it's all still going ahead yeah. would have been nice um you know we've been on airbnb a while now he's been a lot more than i have but we've we've been in quite a few airbnbs between yeah. us now and every single time we've had an acknowledgement email and then an yeah. information email um which unfortunately this one didn't provide but other than that it was lovely and i had nothing negative to say so the fact that they're speaking as if we've done it spitefully or like we want to ruin their business obviously that's not what we want at all we're not that kind of a person um which is why we didn't mention it in the public review it was literally just the star rating so if i go to their actual um page um if i go to the actual page i can see our public review which says wow what an incredible place to stay we loved it the hosts are the friendliest and most welcome we have ever had we loved getting the chance to meet them. The Airbnb is warm, clean and comfortable. A great size for three. The horses right outside made for a very cheery and special stay. Great location for the Yarnfield Conference Centre, Gentle View Wildlife and Monkey Forest. So we haven't said anything to put anyone off. Um, we were just honest, you know, for us, the communication wasn't there and it did leave us concerned. So we did mark it down slightly, but I don't think we did anything spitefully i don't feel like we did anything that would massively hinder their future guests or them gaining income from from this and or losing income sorry yeah losing income from this um and it's quite sad because i they're saying oh you know they they don't see it that i can't i don't know if i've mentioned this in this video or not 
but I've I've said all weekend to our heart families that we've been speaking to this weekend how lovely the place is to say Donnie's been talking about it we generally had nothing really super negative to say about it no. and it's certainly not like we're trying to you know turn anyone against booking with them like I said our, us ourselves I wanted to book again for next year I yeah. I was more than happy to book ahead for next year to be honest, I pr probably would, could have booked it straight away when we, well, not when we got home, because obviously it's it's very late as it is now. But I think over this week, given that we we all know we really want to go back to next year's event yeah. and it's going to be held in the same place on the same weekend, I would have loved to have gone ahead and booked a sim for it next year as well. And if it ended up being a different day, I might have just carried on and gone anyway, because genuinely yeah. I loved being there. So it, it really is a shame that it's it's ended that way. And I'm not someone who wants to cause anyone any sort of upset or anything. So the fact that they had such a strong feel towards the lack of the four or five stars, I don't know. It just, it, it sucks. You know, that's not, that wasn't my intention. It was just, for, for me, it wasn't a five star experience in communication. But literally with everything else, I put five stars with the review, the guest book, everything, it was all really positive. It's not like I left a really nasty review that would put someone off. I made sure yeah. that I focused on the positives there. Yeah, and it's just like, Airbnb, like, their big kind of thing is they don't want people going on there and just randomly rating it all five stars to gain that property more profit, more, like, people seeing it. So, obviously, they're doing it for a fair rating system. And for us to go on and say, yeah, it's five stars across, even though we had, like, we felt the communication wasn't properly, and that would be us be lying, say, to you lot, if you decide to go book it, because you've seen this video yeah. about Well, it. that's what's sad, is I was going to, you know, drop the links and everything, like I do with other places that I like, because I generally thought it was great, but given the communication, it won't, and <clears throat> what's... Um, I think I was making it so sad is that we felt, we felt like the messages were so disheartening, for lack of a better word, that we did end up contacting Airbnb and asking them to block them from messaging us anymore, because the last thing that we need is messages like that. Yeah. I I think they did take it a bit too far, to be honest. I don't, I don't feel feel like there was any need to speak to us the way they did from that alone like if we left yeah. every every single rating on a one star terrible public review then i'd understand it but it wasn't it was one area that they could easily work on yeah but instead of taking that creative criticism if you will like they messaged me to find out what was going well bobby um but they messaged us to obviously find out why the rating was low they could have taken that information progressed that further yeah. instead of trying to form an argument which is not something i'm going to participate in i have very little energy as it is these days um so yeah it's just it's just a bit of a sad thing like we've had an amazing weekend but this kind of put a downer on it because genuinely we were shocked we yeah. like I, I couldn't believe that it was the same people that we spoke to in person then talking to us the way that they did and making it seem like we're out to ruin their their business or something we're really not like i'm still going to show the footage if you want to go find it and stay there then do so um and maybe the communication isn't a problem for other people but for us where we were traveling so far we were really worried that we'd have nowhere to stay if it hadn't gone through properly and considering that on every other stay that we've had we've had those messages it's kind of become the norm for airbnb yeah, to do that not just that like the communication aside we have had problems with uh, other airbnbs before yeah and we have rated them to what we accordingly felt, yeah. yeah what we but we've, right. we've, we've never put like a one or a two but we've ever. but <coughs> we've had you okay? mm -hmm. but we've had like them message us asking us like how can we improve from what the stars you've given us yeah. because as you'll see in our December videos we say that an Airbnb in Guildford and unfortunately they had a problem with the boiler um and I ended up having to take a freezing cold shower there was no hot water in it whatsoever um which meant that Don Louise couldn't have a shower because obviously with her heart condition she's not allowed in cold water but again we we rated that specific specific um section I think we only did like gave it like 
three or four stars again really wasn't it like we wouldn't yeah we, we've never done a one or two star we're, we're not out to upset anyone we're not mm. out to deter people but also you know you want to be honest like you don't look at amazon reviews hoping to see five star across the board if it's not a five star product and the same with airbnb mm. uh, you know you you've the whole point of the rating system is to be honest about the experience that you've had there yeah and like what jade Mead said about that one in december in guildford they messaged us saying asking us what was wrong so we said about the shower being cold and within like i don't know 10 20 minutes they messaged back saying um thank you thank you for that we wouldn't have known that any other time because we had just had our boiler serviced in that oh it's place. important to note we didn't have this contacts number which is why the only way that we could do this was through, through the yeah. reviews we didn't actually have the number it wasn't left in the property yeah most places are but honestly again we've never had like a massive problem with airbnbs no we've never set out to be mean or anything like that you know we're transparent we'll show you the, what we've put up you yeah. know and like with that prop to us saying about they mess us saying yeah the boiler's gone back um boiler the plumber's gone back to look at it and he's generally made a mistake and didn't turn a valve on, so you didn't get all the hot water coming through. Yeah. And they apologised for that, but they also said thank you for letting us know, because otherwise they wouldn't have known when the next person go there, they might not have been as forgiving as what we've done with our star ratings, and they could have quite yeah. easily gave it a one. Cause... And it's important to note that you can't change the rating, so they knew that. Yeah. They knew that that rating was going to stay there. And that the review couldn't be changed and that was going to say that and they still weren't nasty and that was actually quite a big problem for us with the fact that we were traveling with dawn louise and she couldn't have a shower the whole weekend yeah um so yeah i mean i don't know i mean obviously everyone has different opinions so it'd be good to hear what other people think of it as well but it's it's just it's quite obsessing because it had been a really positive experience and like we said we had planned on booking it again for next year because we really did enjoy it and it was very comfortable it's very warm um dawny loved the horses and everything so and um, generally i had nothing bad to say about people whatsoever i thought they were lovely i just i do feel like they they missed out on the opportunity to confirm the booking because with any with any booking that you're doing whether that's a job a holiday you know a dinner reservation or something you normally get some sort of conf cons confirmation and the fact that we didn't actually hear anything from them for so long was a little bit concerning because it got to the last minute where like we haven't heard from them does that mean that we haven't actually got a place to stay yeah. you know if, if they checked their airbnb yeah. have they stopped doing it you know it's it, it runs through your mind so we could to, for us to ease our worries and anxieties around it and to make sure that we our holiday was all fully planned I would have greatly appreciated it if they'd sent a message on confirmation just say you know normally they say something like oh great we'll look forward to seeing you or yeah. see you in a week or however long it's going to be um and then normally in a good amount of days beforehand they give you the details of check-in key numbers directions things like that um however we had to message them to get any of that information and yeah if they hadn't have checked their airbnb messages very regularly we might have ended up thinking that they weren't going to let us stay and therefore we would have forked out more money trying to find somewhere else to stay because this yeah. is not something we could have missed out on really and like another can another example of like really good communication is that in december as well we booked a really late last minute airbnb didn't we oh yeah For super christmas. late christmas eve christmas eve and very they late. they literally phoned us they were amazing they didn't message us back they phoned us saying but they confirmed it and like just asked us why we're so late yeah but that was like oh they were yeah, incredible like they incredible. saved christmas for us they really yeah. did um because obviously we decided really late that we wanted to go and spend it with family because traveling with dawn louise in winter is very difficult and then on top of that with covid we couldn't make yeah. any definitive plans for christmas we have spent christmas for the last couple of years even before covid alone because of her health so it's not something that we can plan ahead of time so the fact that they took the book and it was like 10 o'clock at night it was ridiculously late i think they phoned us at like 11 or something stupid weren't it yeah it was it was it was really really late but we just decided you know what it's been a really hard couple of years we want to be with family at christmas and unfortunately half the family had got covid so that's why it became even more important because the people that weren't supposed to be alone ended up being alone 
and we just wanted to go and you know spend christmas with the family so yeah. the fact that they were able to do that for us so last minute on christmas eve of all days yeah like really really truly thankful to them extremely thankful to them for taking us on so late they didn't have to um we actually ended up paying for an extra night because we couldn't actually get there and it ticks yeah. over midnight so we actually paid for a night that we weren't even there um but i honestly don't care because they they saved it really they saved christmas so yeah. you know um it's, it's just it is a shame because i feel like we left a fair review it isn't too much for them to change going forward. The public review was really positive. Yeah, if I if I if I read that, I'd want to say it, you know. So obviously, let us know your thoughts as well. But it's just a bit of a shame because, yeah. So I'm not gonna put any links down and everything just because I don't feel like it would be fair to people because of the way that they've spoken to us afterwards. That's the only thing that's really put me off it. But if you liked what you've seen in this vlog of the stay, I'm sure you can go and figure out where it is if you want to. Um, and hopefully you'd have a better experience with that than, than we did. Because up, yeah. up until they started inboxing us, we literally were singing their praises to everyone. It's a bit of a sad thing. This is not how I thought we were going to end this video. Because the Little Heart Smash event was, oh my god, it was amazing. Dawn Louise is probably going to make a separate video when she's had time to process everything. Because I don't know if you've ever asked a child, hey, how did school go? Um, but pretty much the same thing happened when I asked her <laughs> <laughs> how the event went. Um, but yeah, she had a really great time. We had a really great time. We loved the area. Yarnfield was the area that we were in absolutely lovely area very beautiful very scenic and, and country-esque um yeah and the gentle shore and monkey forest really worth going to if you live close enough to um but yeah i am absolutely exhausted <laughs> it's it's like nine ten o'clock at night now it is it's ten o'clock <laughs> so i'm pretty tired so we're gonna end today's vlog here yeah. we hope that you've enjoyed watching not so much this last part but we wanted to be honest about it because we've obviously spoke we've obviously spoken about this place throughout the video so yeah so thank you so much for watching if you want to stick around we try and put videos out every single monday we have some really exciting things coming up over the next couple of weeks so stay tuned for that and we'll see you in the next one